Hi everybody. It's been a few days since putting a video up. Uh, something a little bit different today. Yesterday was Wednesday and I went off to my favourite boot sale at Wimbledon. I hold it on Wednesdays and Saturdays. My last trip on Saturday, the one I put a video on about, wasn't very good at all. There was virtually nothing there of any interest. Well, yesterday I went along. There wasn't much there. Loads of clothes, loads of shoes, loads of pots and stuff like that. But the real interesting bits just weren't there. So I had a look round. On the way back or after I'd been round walking back to the car there was a bloke there with some stuff outside and this was one of the items. It's an oscilloscope. Give me the name. It's a well known one. It's a tele equipment D61A. D61A. I looked at it, picked it up. My immediate thought was, no way is that going to work. But it looked in fairly good nick. You can get an idea. If you see something knocked about and scratched and the knobs missing or the spindles on the knob sort of knocked about, you, you sort of look and think, well, Perhaps it's not a very good buy. But looked at this one and um, I sort of passed it. And how much is that? £10. Oh. I said, well, we wouldn't know whether it works. So I sort of hummed and hard, looked at it. And I went to walk away. He says, oh, give us £5 for it. I said, well, £5 is it's worth a gamble. So we came away home with it. I hadn't a clue whether it was going to work or not. I thought, well, £5, at least I'll have £5 in enjoyment have, having a look at it. Well, as you can see, there's nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. Well, I haven't tested it on uh, calibration and all that stuff, but it's given two traces. It's a twin beam. It's got two inputs. You've got your input one, channel one input, your volt switch division, that's the top one, see the top, there's no input going in so um, I'm obviously not going to get, not going to get any wave. The trig level pull auto, that is pulled out, you push that in, it completely goes, you have to have it, but this that brings it up so it's actually triggered. Got all your bits down the bottom. Basically ground it's uh, you've also got TV I guess I thought we had. Yes yeah, so we've got AC and TV. As I say I've got to have have a little read up about it. And I thought well have a have a little look. When I got it, it was completely dead. Uh, plugged it in via my good old Variac. I thought, well, if it's been standing for ages, the capacitors are probably dried out. And put full 240 volts on it, it'll go pop, the fuse will blow. And we might do a bit of damage. So we used the Variac. But nothing happened, nothing at all. So I thought, oh, I don't know, it's probably a fuse gone inside. So had a look inside, and if I can move that up and turn it round. Right, we turned, we turned him round and we turn it off. Right, this is the panel at the back. 
I took the other panels off so we're okay. Um, you've got your voltage selector 214 to 234 107 to 117 There's the, the offending fuse well that's the one I've replaced it with very low current rating at 234 volts it's rated at 250 milliamps which is very very low at 117 volts it's 500 milliamps and now we pop the fuse in and nothing appeared to happen with the exception of the little neon glowing now this is a warning that if that glows then the there is high voltages there whether it's actually plugged in or not the tube itself that's the the base of, of the tube carries a high charge and it is possible that it'll hold a charge and you can discharge it through yourself and it won't do you much good so they put a little neon in there which is actually indicating DC only one of the electrodes is actually a light and that's telling me that the high voltage is there. Now what I couldn't understand was the actual current that was being used. This is one of these handy plug-in devices which funnily enough came from Wimbledon boot cell and that's the current that is rated. It, it's um, very very low current rating and I thought well it's too low but it's obviously not. And that's showing point 0.10, so um, it's a hundred, yeah, hundred milliamps. And it's fused at 250 milliamps, so I thought, well, it must be more or less right. But nothing was happening at this stage. Having a look at the side, these are beautifully made because the panels come off, and lo and behold, you've got your printed circuits. There's the uh, the main transformer. Yeah, three large capacitors. I had an idea they might have gone, but no, they're okay. Your printed board. Looking at it, I come to the conclusion that it's never been tampered with. The soldering is all original. The components certainly look all original. What's interesting is the um, the transistors which is that little white thing they're all in holders which is very nice so if a transistor blows you just pull it out and pop a new one in. That's showing the top of the tube cathode ray tube which is a double beam tube because you've got your your two traces. Turn around, have a look at the other side. That's yeah, still working. You've got your variable trim pots. These are all painted and have not been altered. It is so nice to get a bit of equipment that hasn't been tampered with. These are obviously set up when these are made, they're calibrated and all these little trimming capacitors that's these things in the front, they're capacitors you've got your variable resistances they're all set at a certain value there's some some more transistors see them f f they're slotted into those little holders they're the little black things which is one right in the middle of the screen that's a transistor three more electrolytic capacitors you've got high voltage capacitors there
as I say, it's nice to look at it. Just look inside, see the way it's beautifully made. It was made over here, not in China. The date of this is probably about the 1970s, I would think. It might be a bit before then. But anyhow, there's the name on the side. Tele equipment. These were a very well made scope. Um, and it's nice to see that maintenance can be done on it relatively easily. Anyway, I'm going to end now. Um, any comments please make. Um, it's more or less put on here just to show what little gems you can find. And Wimbledon is just the place to find them. You go there one week, nothing. You go there a few days later, midweek, and what do you get? Loveliest sort of scope. I notice at the moment there's a couple of these on eBay. They're actually in Canada and they are working and they're over a hundred pounds each. So, you know, um, I don't think I've done too bad. I shall obviously be keeping this and uh, I'm really pleased. I'd also like to thank everyone that's passed comments about my not getting able to send out personal messages it's finally cleared and I can get out now so thanks for all your comments and all the help it was certainly handy that mystery item I will put an answer on there the name of the Frenchman is Le Clanche that's the uh, the Frenchman he devised the wet wet Le Clanche cell and the dry Leclanche cell is what we know now as zinc carbon. Anyhow, thanks again for watching. Um, any comments, please give. Anything else, let me know. And thank you for watching. Thank you.